So let's look at some measures of variation or how spread out your data are. If I was going to make shirts, let's say, I could make shirts just for the average person, but a lot of people would be bigger or smaller than average. So making one size of shirts is probably not going to cut it. I need to figure out how much people's shirt sizes vary so I know which sizes to stock. There's a couple measures of variation that we're going to learn about. The first one is pretty easy. First measure of variation is range. Which is the biggest number minus the smallest number. The advantage of this one is that it's very easy to find. Subtract and you're done. The disadvantage is that when you're looking at the range, if you've got outliers in there, you're only looking at the outliers. It's like if you're looking at the range of heights of the people in a room, only the tallest person and the shortest person even count. The rest of the people in the room, we don't even ask them how tall they are. So, advantage of the range is that it's easy. Disadvantage is that it only looks at outliers. So, we need better tools. And those tools are the variance and the standard deviation are the best tools to look at variation within a data set. The problem is they're kind of a nuisance to calculate. The first step is to find the mean. How do we find the mean again? Oh, right. We add them all up and divide by the number of values. Here we have five values. So, the mean is 7. And now, the next step to finding either the variance or the standard deviation, we're going to find both because they're exactly the same up till the last step. The next thing we do is we set up a chart. Your x values go down the first column. In the next column, you do value minus mean. minus 7 is 3, 6 minus 7 is negative 1, 
4 minus 7 is negative 3. So you do value minus mean for each of your values. The next thing you do is you take each of the second column and square it. This also makes all the numbers positive. This is helpful. So, the table's done, you add up the last column. So this is the sum of the squares. That adds up to 20. We're actually almost done. You take the sum and you stick it in the formula. You just divide it by the number of values. So, the variance of this data is 4. Okay, now do we have to do it all over again to find the standard deviation? No, you just take the square root. The standard deviation is 2. It turns out that the standard deviation, the one after the square root, is a lot more useful. Any questions? Good. You'll probably have to look at a couple more examples before you really get the hang of it. The good news is, this is the worst formula in the class. There are other hard things in this class, but in terms of sheer calculational ugliness, it doesn't get any worse than this.